Mad Girl's Love Song by Sylvia Plath. I shut my eyes and all the world drops dead. I lift my lids and all was born again. I think I made you up inside my head. The stars go waltzing out in blue and red. An arbitrary blackness gallops in. I shut my eyes and all the world drops dead. I dream that you bewitched me into bed and sung me moonstruck, kissed me quite insane. I think I made you up inside my head. God topples from the sky, hell's fires fade, exit seraphim and Satan's men. I shut my eyes and all the world drops dead. I fancied you'd return the way you said, but I grew old and I forgot your name. I think I made you up inside my head. I should have loved a thunderbird instead. At least when spring comes, they roar back again. I shut my eyes and all the world drops dead. I think I made you up inside my head. Welcome back, everybody, to more Doki Doki Literature Club. Last episode was a doozy. Yeah, let's continue on. We're still trying for Yuri. I'm gonna keep trying, damn it, until I get what I want. Another day passes and it's time for the club meeting already. Gotten a little more comfortable here over the past couple days. Entering the club room, the usual scene greets me. That's not usual at all. Welcome back, SC. Hi, Yuri. I'm not sure if it's just me, but Yuri's expression hmm, seems a little empty. The weight of yesterday's quarrel still hangs in the air a little. Um. Yuri glances over his shoulder looking around the room. Natsuki's reading manga at a desk. Not surprised. If the desk is even there, I don't know. And surprisingly, Monica isn't here yet. Suddenly, Yuri takes my arm and pulls me to the corner of the room. About yesterday. I. I really need to apologize. Nothing like that has ever happened before. And something just came over me, I guess. I wasn't actually mentally sound. Yeah... Please don't think we're usually like this. Not just me, but Natsuki as well. Yuri... I'm happy that you were considerate and apologized. I don't have to worry too much. Come on, it's okay. Even though I've only been here a couple of days, I could tell something was off yesterday. Maybe we were just a little extra sensitive because it was our first time sharing poems. But whatever it was, it didn't make me think any less of you. I'd already decided that there was no way you could be a bad person. And now that you're apologizing, I know you really didn't mean it. Ah, uh, I see. Don't say those kinds of things so frankly. They make me a little too happy. A little too happy? I'm really glad that you're such an understanding person. Oh, I'm... So understanding, you don't even you don't even know. And I'm really glad that you joined this club. Everything is a little bit brighter with you around. And uh, uh, oh yeah, um, about yesterday, I actually skipped some of the poem on an accident. It was not intentional. I was just so caught up in the moment that I was worried about Sayori that uh, I skipped the poem, and you know we ran out of the ran out of the room and went after. Her. So it was not intentional to skip it. I just, you know, I was just, you know, I was, I was blinded by emotion. That's my story. I'm sticking with it. So what am I saying right now? I just, hey, have you guys seen Monica? Ah, no, I haven't. I was also kind of wondering where she was. Man, you're, I'm guessing you haven't either. Yuri is clearly taken aback at how calmly Natsuki is addressing her. No, I haven't. Jeez, this isn't like her at all. I know it's stupid, but I can't help worry a little bit. What? What are you looking at me like that? Um, Natsuki, about yesterday. I, I just wanted to apologize. I promise I didn't mean any of the things I said. 
and I'll do my best to, uh, control, to stay under control from now on. So, Yuri, what the heck are you talking about? Did you do something yesterday? Huh? Jeez. Whatever's on your mind, I'm sure it was nothing. I don't even remember anything bad happening. You're the kind of person who worries too much about little things, aren't you? But, I'll accept your apology anyway, if it helps you feel better about it. Besides, it's kind of nice to hear since I was always afraid you secretly hated me or something like that. That's weird. Did, like, yesterday didn't even happen? At least that part didn't. <laughs> no, not at all. I don't hate you. <laughs> well, you're kind of weird, but I don't hate you either. Mitsuki turns to me. You're still on trial, though. Hey. Suddenly, the door swings open. Sorry, I'm super sorry. Ah, oh, there you are. I didn't mean to be late. I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Nah. Well, Zuki was. We uh, out. We 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 knew better. I, I was not. <laughs> what took you so long, anyway? Ah. Well, the last period today was study hall. To be honest, I kind of just lost track of time. <laughs> that makes no sense, though. You wouldn't have, you would have heard the bell ring, at least. I must not have heard it since I was practicing piano. Yeah, her and your piano. Piano? I wasn't aware you played music as well, Monica. Ah, don't give me more credit than I deserve. I guess I've been practicing for a while, but still not really good yet. Still, that must require a lot of dedication. But I'm still impressed. Oh, well, thanks, Yuri. You should play something for us sometime. <laughs> That's, uh... Monica looks at me. Well, I'm working on writing a song. That's new. It's not quite done yet. <clears throat> you can probably play piano. You're already writing a song. Impressed? <clears throat> no, there's a lot about Monica. I don't know. A lot about her I don't really want to know. But I feel we're going to find out eventually anyway. Maybe once I get a little better, I will. That sounds cool. I look forward to it. Is that so? In that case, I won't let you down, SC. Monica smiles sweetly. Ah, I didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. Ah, don't worry. I was hoping that I could share it with you anyway. I guess that's why I've been practicing so much recently. I see. I'm not sure if Monica's referring to the whole club or just me. Huh, weird. Best of luck. Thanks. So, I didn't miss anything, did I? No, not really. I chose not to bring up anything that the three of us talked about. You should ask her if she remembers what happened yesterday. Seems weird. Besides, Nizuki had already run off into the closet. I'm actually surprised that our character isn't in her monologue like, wait, what? How does she not remember what happened yesterday? Maybe we don't remember what happened yesterday. Maybe it didn't happen. Maybe it was all figment of our imagination. SC, um, since your compliments put me in a good mood, like they always do, I was wondering if you would like to spend some time together today. Oh, do you know it, baby? I mean, in the club, you know, not, you know, not like that. Yeah, definitely. I planned on it anyway. Okay. Oh, look at her eyes light up. Can we start now? <clears throat> I mean, I guess. Let's find a place to sit. Ah. Uh -uh. Keep clearing my throat. Ugh. I'm being a little forceful, aren't I? I'm sorry. My heart just won't stop pounding for some reason. Don't worry about it. If anything, it's nice to see you have so much energy. Because I don't. Yeah. But I need to try to calm down. Bad things happen when I'm not, not calmed down. I won't be able to focus on reading like this. Take your time. Yuri takes a deep breath and pulls a copy of the book out of her bag. Actually, I have a request. Do you mind if I make some tea first? Not at all. Thanks very much. 
If there's one thing that makes my reading time here any better, it's a nice cup of tea. Not to mention for yourself as well. Nira stands up and makes her way to the closet. I follow and watch as she retrieves a small water pitcher from the shelf, the kind with the filter inside. Can you hold this for a second? Sure. Nira hands me the water pitcher and also fetches an electric kettle. I'm going to plug this into the teacher's desk and I'll go get some water. She walks past me and sets the kettle down at the teacher's desk. I simply watch her movements. To my surprise, the way she moves really contrasts her speaking mannerisms. Especially because of her long legs, Yuri appears elegant and methodical. Okay, may I have my water pitcher? Well, because you said may, I'll give it to you. Thanks, I'll be right back. Ah, might as well, you know, something's gonna happen here, right? Might as well walk with you. That's okay. You stay here. It won't take long. What? I thought she'd jump at the chance. Picture in hand, Yuri hurries out of the classroom. Ah, did Yuri leave you again? She didn't leave me. What, what am I getting? What, are we getting divorced? No, it's not like that this time. It's not like that. She's just filling up the water pitcher to make tea. I mean, it's a simple chore. We don't need two people. Oh, okay. Sorry for misunderstanding. Bet you were. Ten minutes pass. Ten minutes? You said it wouldn't take that long. Something holding her up. Maybe she got lost on the way to the water fountain. I'm bored just waiting here, so I decided to go look for her. Search party for Yuri. Let's see. The music got muffled. So that means the music was coming out of the classroom. Which means there's a radio in there somewhere. Hmm, what does that mean? Probably nothing. The most logical place for Yuri to be would be the nearest water fountain. I mean, duh, right? I start heading down the hallway. <sighs> What's that noise? If it's coming from around the corner. It sounds like breathing. <sighs> a sharp inhale, like someone is sucking the air through their teeth. Are they in pain? I reach the corner and peer around it. Yuri? Ah! Oh my god! Look at her arm! Yuri? Oh my... Oh! I'm back! Whew! Thanks for waiting patiently. So do you like the long tea? I don't know what I like anymore. Yeah. Anything is fine. So I'm assuming we don't realize that happened. Very well. Yuri sets the temperature on the kettle to 200 degrees. Celsius. Now it's time to get the teapot. You really do this properly, don't you? Of course. This game, this game is free, by the way. This game is awesome. I love it. I love how they went there. They, you know, it's like a happy-go-lucky game, you know, at the start. But it gets so dark and there's so many, like, intricate layers that you don't know about until you play through it, you know, multiple times. I'm assuming I get to play through it again at some point because, you know, I'll really all my saves anyway. So, yeah, I'm, like, really excited to see where this all heads, you know? It's really cool. And now, this is the kind of shit that VNs need, you know? Something to shake up all this, you know, all the happy-go-lucky stuff, you know? Something to make you really think and... I love a good horror VN, you know, it's really cool. I shouldn't do any less when I'm making tea for others. Even if I'm not an expert on tea or anything. <laughs> In that case, you'll only be even more impressed. Ah, perhaps I will. Yuri fetches the teapot and begins measuring the tea leaves. To my surprise, she even starts humming a little to herself. Must be in a good mood now. Is that so? I was letting it show, and you noticed. I was doing a bit of thinking, and I decided that I would try expressing myself a little bit more. Turns out it's not very hard for me to do. When it's you who's around, anyway. Ah. So that never happened, right? In the hallway? With her cutting her arm? Uh, I don't know. I don't think so. That's great, Yuri. Just don't push yourself too much. You're always worrying about me. It's very endearing. No, no. I kinda have to now. That's... Yuri wasn't kidding. 
I don't even know if I can keep up with this. I want Jerry pour a cup of tea for each of us. I see, I have another request. Do you mind if we sit on the floor today? Huh? Why's that? It's a little easier on my back. I can read with my back against the wall rather than bending over at my desk. Ah, oh, sorry, I didn't realize. No worries. I just have back pain very regularly, so I do my best to manage it. Oh, is that so? I wonder why that is. It's mostly really because of my... Uh, my... Your posture, right? I always sounds over like that while reading. Yes. I have terrible reading posture, so that's why we should sit on the floor. Fair enough. I'll go ahead and get the book. I retrieved the book from my bag. Oh, well, it's not bloody. That's good. Ah, I have some chocolate as well. It's a bag of small chocolate candies. I love small chocolate candies. I take because it will go well with the tea. Yuri and I then sit against the wall, teacups at our sides. As if in sync, we assume the same reading position as last time, each holding other half of the book. Except this time, our bodies are even closer to each other. I can't see too well. Hmm? Yuri sides closer until our shoulders are touching. How am I supposed to focus on reading like this? Gary was always kind of cute, but... When she's being less apprehensive, it's almost more than I can handle. Your teacup? Gary hands me my teacup. Holding it with my hand that's not holding the book, I end up in a position that makes it even harder to focus. Because now I need to worry about making sure I don't accidentally touch her chest. Meanwhile, Yuri has noticed a single thing. She wears her intense reading expression, and I can only presume that the world around her has already faded away. I use all of my willpower to focus on reading. After a few minutes of this fruitless endeavor, I finally manage to relax a little. I put the teacup between my legs and fumble with the chocolate wrapper. Ah, sorry. I briefly let go of the book to finish opening the wrapper. You can have as much as you want. Ah, uh, that's... That's okay, I won't take any. Are you sure? Well... If I touch it, I might get smudges on the pages. No, you're right. I didn't even think of that. My bad. Oh, no need to apologize. I'll hold the book, okay? Are you sure? Of course. Yeah, here we go again. Yuri opens the book with both hands. She holds it so that I don't have any harder of a time reading from it. But as a result, her left arm is practically resting on top of my leg. Well, in that case, Yuri's already totally focused on reading again. I take a chocolate candy and pop it into my mouth. It's very delicious. Then I take another chocolate candy and I hold it up to Yuri. She doesn't even look away from the book. She simply parts her lips as if the situation was completely natural. That means I can't stop here. She's expecting the chocolate. I apprehensively place the chocolate in her mouth. Just like that, Yuri closes her lips over it. Eh? Yuri's expression suddenly breaks. Did, did I just... And he looks at me like she needs to confirm what just happened. Um, I see. So sorry. I guess I shouldn't have done that. Ah. Yuri starts to breathe heavily. I... I can't... I see. Suddenly, Yuri forcefully grabs my arm and jerks me to my feet. My teacup gets knocked over. I see. My heart... My heart won't stop pounding, I see. I can't calm down. I can't focus on anything anymore. Can you feel it, Essie? Yuri suddenly presses my hand against her chest. Why is this happening to me? I feel like I'm losing my mind. I can't make it stop. I can't even make... It even makes me not want to read. I just don't look at you. Um, it's time to share poems. Alright, here we go. Let's go to the new one. Let's go to the new one. Let's see if our poem's any different. Yeah, just as I thought. I see, come on. I'm not stupid. I know how much you've been spending time with Yuri. It's obvious that you care more about impressing her than trying to improve your writing. To put it bluntly, it's kind of pathetic. Why are you even in this club? Honestly, I thought getting a new member would help everyone get more involved together. Not exclude each other even more. 
This is such a stupid activity anyway. Look, I'm not in a good mood today and I really just don't feel like talking right now. Please go away. See, I think you saw something earlier that you weren't supposed to see. I didn't want to have to tell you this, but I don't think I have a choice. It's getting kind of dangerous for you to spend so much time with Yuri. I don't know why, but she seems pretty easily excitable when she's around you. Which well, shouldn't be a problem in itself, but when Yuri gets too excited, she finds a place to hide and starts cutting herself with a pocket knife. Isn't that kind of messed up? It's not unheard of. She even brings a different one to school every day like she has a collection or something. I mean, it's definitely not because she's depressed or anything like that. I mean, how do you know that? I think she just gets some kind of high from it. It might even be like a sexual thing. But the point is you've kind of been enabling her. I'm not saying it's your fault though. But I guess that's why I had to explain it all to you. So I think if you keep your distance, that'd probably be best for her. While you're at it, don't be shy to spend a little more time with me. You're, you're really trying to sell yourself, aren't you? To put it lightly, I at least have it together in my head, and I know how to treat my club members. No, don't insult other people's mental issues, come on, that's not fun. But anyway, you want to read my poem now? I don't want to read your poem. You pissed me off. I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you did too. Alright, read the damn poem. Save me. The colors, they won't. Bright, beautiful colors. Flashing, expanding, piercing. Red, green, blue. An endless cacophony of meaningless noise. The noise, it won't stop. Violent, grating waveforms. Squeaking, screeching, piercing. Sine, cosine, tangent. Like playing a chalkboard on a turntable. Like playing a knife on a breathing ribcage. An endless poem of meaningless. Oh, there's more. Deleter. Sorry, I know it's kind of abstract. I'll say that again. I'm just trying to, um. Well, never mind. There's no point in explaining. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. You never know when, um, oh, who am I talking to? Can you hear me? Hello? Tell me you can hear me. Anything? Please help me. I'll, I'll, I'll try. I don't know if I'll be able to succeed, but I'll try. I can't save everybody, though. I'm just one man. I only have so many save files. It's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. I've been waiting for this. Let's see what you've written for today. Yuri stares at the poem with a surprised expression on her face. Do you like it? Let's see. This one might be even better than yesterday's. How did you even pick up on this so quickly? Just yesterday I was telling you the kind of techniques worth practicing. Now maybe that's why. You did a good job explaining. I really wanted to try to give it more imagery. Yuri visibly swallows. Even her hands appear sweaty. He's weak. Uh, uh, that makes me so happy. It's so amazing to feel like I'm valued, SC. Everything that you write is a treasure to me. My heart pounds just holding it. Uh-oh. Now remember, the more excited she gets, the more worked up she gets, and she ends up cutting herself. For some kind of pleasure, maybe? <laughs> I want to write a poem about this feeling. Uh, I don't... The last time we had that, someone hung themselves. I don't know if I want that again. I don't think I can handle that again. Is that bad? I'm not being weird, right? Nah, you're fine. I'm just having a harder time than usual at concealing my emotions. 
kind of embarrassed. But right now, I just want you to read my poem, too. Okay? Wheel. Oh, my God. Oh, man, I hate this font. It's, such hard. it's so hard to read. A rotating wheel turning on an axle. Grinding. Bolt head. Linear gearbox. Falling sky. Seven holy stakes. A docked ship. A portal to another world. A thin rope tied to a thick rope. <clears throat> what is that? A torn harness. Parabolic gearbox. Expanding universe. Time controlled by slip slipping cogwheels. Existence of God. Swimming with open water in all directions. Drowning. A prayer written in blood. A prayer written in time devouring snakes with human eyes. I was like, what? A thread connecting all living human eyes. A kaleidoscope of holy stakes. Exponential gearbox. A sky of exploding stars. God disproving the existence of God. A wheel rotating in six dimensions. Forty gears and a ticking clock. A clock that ticks one second for every rotation of the planet. A clock that ticks forty times every time a tick every second time. A bolt head of holy stakes tied to the existence of a dock ship to another world. A kaleidoscope of blood written in clocks. A time-devouring prayer connecting the sky of forty gears and open human eyes in all directions. Breathing gearbox. Breathing bolt head. Breathing ship. Breathing portal. Breathing snakes. Breathing God. Breathing blood. Breathing holy snakes. Breathing luminous eyes. Breathing time. Breathing prayer. Breathing sky. Breathing wheel. Well, it's certainly abstract. I'll give it that. <laughs> Doesn't really matter what it's about. My mind has been a little hyperactive lately, so I had to take it out of on, on your pen. Ah, that is a pen f fell out of your bag yesterday, so I took it home for safekeeping, and I am. Um, I just really like the way that it writes. So I wrote this poem with it, and now you're touching it. <laughs> I'm okay. What did I just... Can we pretend this conversation never happened? You can keep the poem, though. I guess. A joke. The men walked into a club. In the club, there was a girl who liked him very much. They spent some time together, and that she liked him even more. One day, the girl realized she was in love with him. Before disaster could happen... Third party intervened with her programming. Suddenly, the girl hated herself for being in love. This contradiction caused the script to derail. The universe started to collapse, but she killed herself just in time. Damn. Wow. Okay, everyone. We're all done reading each other's poems, right? We have something we need to go over today, so if everyone could come sit at the front of the room... Just about the festival. Well, sort of. Ugh, do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we can put together anything good in just a few days. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. That's a concern of mine as well. I don't really do well with last minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're gonna keep it simple, okay? Look, I know everyone's been a little more lively ever since this seed joined. <laughs> yeah. And we've started with some club activities. But this isn't the time for us to become complacent. We still only have four members. And the festival is our only real chance to find more, you know? What's so great about getting new members anyway? We already have enough to be considered an official club. More members will just mean everything gets noisier and more difficult to manage. Natsuki... I don't think you're looking at the right way at all. Do you want to share your passion with as many people as you can? That's why I make YouTube videos. To inspire them to find the same feelings that brought you here in the first place. This literature club should be a place where people can express themselves like they can't do anywhere else. It should be a place so intimate that you never want to leave. I know you feel that way too. I know we all do. That's why we should work hard to put some something together for the festival, even if it's something small. Right, SC? Uh. Oh, come on. You can't take advantage of SC to agree with you just because he doesn't know how to say no to anything. 
Look, Monica, do you really think any of us here joined the club with other people in mind? You never even talked until SC joined. As for me, I just like it better than I here than I do at home. And SC isn't even passionate about literature in the first place. And that's everyone. Sorry, but you're really the only one who's so interested in finding new members. The rest of us are fine like this. I know you're president and all, but you should really consider our opinions for once. Damn. Monica is clearly taken aback by Natsuki's words. That's not true at all. I'm sure you're in SC want to get more members too. Right? I don't know about Yuri, but I'm kind of indifferent. If I showed as much enthusiasm as Monica wanted, then I would probably be lying. Still, if it's up to me to rescue the situation... Um, no. Natsuki's right, isn't she? This club, it's nothing more than a place for a few people to hang out. Why did I think that everyone here saw it the same way as I did? No, but that doesn't mean we're against getting new members or anything. I see, why did you even join this club? I don't know. There were no cupcakes. What were you hoping to get out of it? Well, that's not really something I can be honest about, is it? In fact, if I remember, you weren't even given the choice not to join. Monica sits down and stares at her desk. What's the point of all this, anyway? What if starting this club was a mistake? Now you've done it, Natsuki. What, me? I just spoke my mind. Is it a crime, to be honest? It's not about being honest. It's about word choice. Besides, you have no right to speak for everyone else in the club like that. You don't understand at all. I just... I just want a place that feels nice to hang out with a few friends. Is there a problem with the club being that just for me? There aren't any... There aren't many other places like that for me. And now Monica wants to take it away from me. She's not taking anything away. No, SC. It's not the same. It won't be the same with the direction she wants to take it. If I wanted that, then I could have just joined any other stupid club. But this one? I mean... At least for a little bit of time, things were nice. Natsuki starts packing up her things. I'm going home. I feel like I don't belong here right now. Natsuki. Natsuki ignores Yuri and walks right out of the classroom. This is bad. I don't know what to do. Well, you have an opinion on the festival? I, I, I don't know. I'm kind of indifferent, I guess. Who cares about that obnoxious brat? I mean, I like how nice and quiet this club is right now. And I'm just happy with you here. But still, I'm the vice president. It's not right for me to ignore my responsibilities like that. Nobody would cry if she killed herself. I should do my best to consider everyone's perspective and make the decision that's right for the club. But what about you, SC? What do you want to get out of this club? You repeats the same question as Monica. I decided to give an indirect answer, but better than nothing. Well, I think the most important thing is for everyone to get along. I mean, that's important, right? And for the club to find something that you can't get anywhere else. I don't think it's about how many members, but rather the quality of each member. That's what will end up making the Literature Club a special place. I see. I really agree with you. Each member contributes their own qualities in a special way. With each change in members, the identity of our club as a whole will change too. I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing, stepping out of your comfort zone once in a while. So if you'd like to help Monica with the festival, then I'm on your side as well. Alright. Well, maybe we can all talk to Natsuki tomorrow. Yuri nods. Hey, Yuri. Huh? Um, I know things were a little awkward yesterday. But I feel like you deserve to know that I still think you're a wonderful vice president. And also a wonderful friend. Monica. I want to do everything I can to make this the best club ever. Okay? Me too. Yeah. Let's all go home for today. We'll talk about the festival tomorrow. Okay. I look forward to it. Shall we go, Essie? Um, please don't take this the wrong way, but... I'm going to chat a little bit with Essie before we leave just to see what he thinks of his time here and all that. It's important to me as president. You 
looks a little troubled, but she doesn't protest. Okay. I trust your judgment, Monica. In that case, I'll see the two of you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Monica waves as Yuri exits the room. Phew. Things have been a little hectic, haven't they? Yeah. Let's put it mildly. See, I just wanted to make sure you're enjoying your time at this club. I would really hate to see you unhappy. I feel like I'm responsible for that as president. Oh, it's getting all staticky. And I really do care about you, you know. I don't like seeing the other girls give you a hard time. Without me, Natsuki isn't everything. And Jerry being a little bit, you know. <laughs> Sometimes it feels like just you and I are the only real people here. You know what I mean? But it's weird, because in all the time we you've been here, we've hardly gotten to spend any time together. Ah, I mean, I guess it's technically only been a couple days. Technically. Sorry, I didn't mean to say something weird. There are just some things I've been hoping to talk about with you. Things I know only you could understand. So that's why... Wait, not yet! No! Stop it! 